Okay, good morning, everybody. I hope everybody's well. Happy Wednesday for those that are here live. We've been living in this space that I hope is making sense. It's this concept that I'm trying, I hope I'm, I'm explaining, right? It's this idea that what drives us is really come, comes from an inner source. And if we're not, if we end up taking the drive that's inside us, that's deeper, processing it through the lens of a physical need, going to the world looking for some physical impact and getting something physical and that's it, we never feel fully satisfied. So let me give you an example. Let's use the easy ones. A person feels like they're not eating healthy enough. Okay? The desire to be in shape, I believe, comes from this inner desire, spiritual desire, to use the material world properly. If a person is not eating right, there's a spiritual piece to it. Food is a tool. Food has a lot of holiness to it, believe it or not. In fact, many spiritual um, leaders and I've seen many Jewish leaders that I've read speak about this idea that, that it's very hard to grow in spirituality if you have no control over what you eat. Right? Food is a tool. It's physical. It's just a tool. It's It should be there to create the fuel that you need to accomplish your goals in life. That's, in the ideal, how you would look at it. I don't eat food because I need to take the pleasure out of food I get pleasure out of food, wonderful but I'm my goal is to accomplish my goal is to do something my goal is to become something and the way I become something is I need fuel to get through it and I use food to do that so if you think about it the, the feeling that someone would get the resolution that would be made on food related things comes from a deeper spiritual place where your, your body Right, your 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 soul saying you could you could be more than this, you could be healthier, you can look better, you can do more. Come on, it's food, it's it, it, you're 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 a human being, man. Come on, okay. That inner desire to use the physical world properly gets manifested in someone's mind, and they go into I gotta look great. So that is a very physical manifestation of a spiritual need. The spiritual need of taking mastery over the physical world so that you can fulfill spiritual deeper needs gets translated in someone's mind as, I want to look great. You see how the inner spiritual need to control food, when you translate it into somebody who is more material, says, yeah, I want to look, I want to look great. So they go out and work out and eat healthy, and they don't really eat healthy. They just do some crazy diet and take some shortcuts and whatever. Or they do it right. Who cares? But the goal is that their goal is looking good. But then they put on their outfit and they look good or better. And they go out into the world and somebody says, you look amazing. With me still? Okay. They feel that they did it for this reason, right? That feeling they had six months earlier when they looked themselves and said, I got to look better. And they went out and did all the work. That feeling that they had was, I'm going to get to a place where I look good and I look so good that someone's going to tell me I look good. It's not just I'm going to feel good. Or they feel good. They, they see it in themselves, let's say. That's a very physical impact. They're judging work based on a physical impact, someone else's opinion. Or their opinion of themselves vis-a-vis -vis how you look to the rest of the world. Or they were once an athlete and now they get to like remember the good old days. Or whatever, whatever, whatever. Like the idea that there's some physical impact that's going to happen to them when they achieve their goals. And so they do and they achieve it. You know what happens after that? It's not so great afterwards. 
all right, they go to bed at night and they're the same person. They don't feel fully satisfied. They feel better about themselves, but not like fully satisfied. So the next day, and the next day, and the next day. So what ends up happening now is the body starts to adjust to the physical impact. Now, the way it works is that, like we said earlier with the flowers, or whatever the, my buddy bought his wife, whenever your brain orients against something, it stops becoming interesting to it. So at some point, the physical impact that you have, which was losing weight and looking good, it stops working because the people around you aren't as interesting. So you may take it to Instagram after that and start posting stuff so that more people comment on you. Or you may push it further. Or it may be athletics, so you may not run five miles, but you run 20 miles. Whatever the thing is, you need to feed the physical beast because the, the physical mind, the material mind, never gets satisfied with just a physical input. And then at some point, that gets boring. And then once that gets boring, there's nothing deeper than that. And when there's nothing deeper than that, either it's habituated, so it's your life, which is fine, or you slide back because it's not delivering for you what you hoped it would deliver for you, and it's not worth it. It's not worth passing up on dessert every single time for nothing. You see, what happened along the way was that the person was looking for the physical impact and that as the goal of the action. Now imagine as if someone takes a little bit of a different approach and feels this feeling of, I got to lose weight. Now their soul is saying, yeah, of course you do. You got to be healthy. You got to control your physicalness. And they use it. I got to look great. Okay, they're physical. But as they're working to look great, what they're hoping for is not that someone else says you look great. What they're working on is the action. And they're delving into, why do I eat this way for? What's my relationship to food? They're trying to get into the action of eating, the action of choices, the action of being healthy. What do I got to be healthy for? What's the point of this whole thing? They're not thinking, when I'm done, someone will say you look great. They're not even thinking, when I'm done, I'm going to run five extra miles. They're not thinking, when I'm done, I'm going to be like I was when I was 18. They're thinking, how do I, how do I get better at this thing called controlling food? Yeah, I'm sure people will think I look great, and, I'll, and there's pleasure in that. And why shouldn't you enjoy pleasure and walking in, and it's someone thinks, great. It's pleasure in getting physically rewarded. But you're delving into why you're doing this for and how do I do it better? And if you do that long enough, what ends up happening is if you think this through, it starts with your soul, the deeper meaning, a real purpose. It floats up to the physical mind and it gets manifested as a desire for more physical, in this case, more attention. But what happens is, is as the brain stops going, yeah, I'm going to get attention, but looks inward and says, forget the attention. Let's just worry about the mitzvah, gorerit mitzvah, the, the, the good deed, if you will, not eating this thing leads to me being better not eating this thing because my brain gets better at it. It gets easier for me. My brain orients around it. I'm thinking about it more. I'm more mindful of what I eat. Now I feel like I have more control than I ever had before so that I can look into what foods make sense to me. What happens as you look inwards, you know where you go when you go inwards? You go in. So now your brain is free to go, well, why am I doing this in the first place for? Is there something deeper that's leading my action? Because what you're trying to do is you're trying to be great at the action. And so the action, be, delving into the action will take you down from the surface of the action into the depth of the action to ask basic existential action-related questions. Why does it matter what I eat? Why do I have to get on that treadmill? Why? And what you'll start to realize is that if all you care about is changing how you relate to food and you stop worrying about the physical impact it'll have, you move the touch points from being a physical touch point, which doesn't necessarily satisfy you, to a, phys a, a metaphysical and spiritual touch point. Oh, it's because why do I have to be controlled by my food? 
Why do I want to not be healthy? Who cares how I look? I care more about how I feel. And people have done this, by the way. I've spoken to people who have gone on these crazy diets and halfway been like, wait, why would I eat this? This is bad for me. I know it's full of chemicals. I'll eat this. And someone will be like, yeah, but that's more fattening. And the person will be like, yeah, but it's healthier. And they'll, like, they'll, they'll both be looking at each other like cross-eyed, like, what do you mean it's healthier? Who cares? Who cares about health? This is about looking good. And the person's like, what? This is about looking good? It's about having healthy? And, and it's like unbelievable. The same people with the same resolution on Jan 1, let's say, you know, come March, April, one person's going, who cares? I just heard from some doctor that if I take 30 pills on a Tuesday morning, it's going to somehow shift my stomach and I'm going to produce, I'm going to excrete more hormones and I'm going to lose 40 pounds. The guy's like, are you out of your mind? What are you talking about? You're watching stuff at two o'clock in the afternoon. Like, why don't you just like, I don't know, be productive and just eat healthy. Well, because I won't be able to lose that extra 15 pounds. The guy's like, who cares? They were the same person in the beginning, but as they go through it, one starts to delve into the action called eating healthy, the, into the action of being healthy, into the action of what's my relationship to food, into the action of what's my relationship to the, my desires. And he now he takes that core rut zone, that core spiritual desire that, get, that, get, that got manifested up through a physical lens, and he brings it right back to its source. And he's fully satisfied. She's fully satisfied. Now she's getting control. She's evolving spiritually. She's changing. That other person isn't changing. They're just trying to get something. They're the same person with the same relationship to food. They're just trying to get that attention. They're both starting from the same goals. But one is always looking out and one is always looking in. The reward of an action is an action because you end up getting good at the action. You end up being satisfied whether the action works and then you end up delving deeper into the action itself. And then now that action becomes a part of you. You don't just connect your brain to it. You're not just connecting your neurons to something. You're connecting your soul to it. And now it's hooked to who you are. And when you can get to that, you don't need to walk into a room and have somebody say how good you look. You're so fully satisfied with who you are that the outside impact becomes less relevant. It's nice. It's gravy. Contrast that with the other person who's never delved in. Impact, 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 impact. At some point, they're taking shortcuts. They're doing things that are really har harmful for their body because it's getting them closer and quicker to the impact. Then they get the impact. They win the race. They look good in the dress for the wedding. They walk into a room, people comment. But they're the same person they were before they even started this thing. And the minute that impact stops becoming interesting, they're gone. We start again. We start again. Round and round we go. All right, we'll talk about this. All right, everybody, have a great day. With God's help, I cannot wait to see you again tomorrow. Have a great day. Living on a lifeline, the world doesn't ever seem to change. Looking for the sunshine, but you're caught up in the rain. It's like your eyes are wide open, but you cannot see. You're watching life pass you by like one, two, three. Walking in destruction, the winds of life blur your vision. All the devastation forever feels like you're on the run. It's time. No one else can set you free, you're locked inside, and only you have got the key.